Welcome to episode three of History Laid Bear. I'm Dave Shee Bannerman. And I'm Martin E. Normand. And today we're going to talk about the Salem Tomato Trials. Let's get into it. Have you ever heard of this? Honestly, um, I really hadn't until you you mentioned it on the phone to me, and I was like, "You are seriously messing." And you're like, "Well, no, I'm not. I'll send you the notes for it." And I knew, as I said, I knew nothing about it at all. I mean, it blew me away when I first started reading it. I thought it was in Salem, where. The witch, tri- witch trials took place, which... See, I was thinking the exact same thing. Um, I thought it was in Salem, if I remember rightly, it is in Salem where the witch trials took place in New England. Massachusetts, yeah. Yeah, Massachusetts. Yeah, um, they took place between um, February 1692 and March 1693. I mean, absolutely horrific. People were just being accused of being witches. Yeah. Which, it you know, was... p- p- over 200 people were accused 30, 30 of them were found found I mean, i'm using air quotes here guilty yeah. and at least 19 were executed it was let's just say the least a horrible period of time yeah it was i mean later on the authorities in salem recanted it we recanted everything and realized they just made a massive blunder and compensated the families and that, that doesn't Obviously, doesn't bring the victims back, but no monetary compensation for it. it no, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. No, no, no. It's just it was. It was a lot that can be said about that. <clears throat> Maybe we'll we'll get into the Salem witch trials one day. Uh, it's a very dark subject, but possible, 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 possible. Today, though, we're not in Salem, Massachusetts. We're in Salem, New Jersey, where the humble tomato was on trial. Do you like tomatoes? I do, actually. Um, I like my tomatoes done a very specific way, though. Um, if it's cherry tomatoes, it's roasted with a little bit of sea salt, balsamic vinegar, and olive oil in the oven. Very specific, but very nice. But fair, I do like tomatoes. Fair enough. I I don't mind tomatoes if they're in something. You oh, know? yeah, yeah. These people who can... These people who can just stand and eat a tomato, uh, no, I don't um, understand that. No, it's, um, it, the texture it's too slimy for me. I'm not, I'm not into it. I'm not one for tomatoes like that myself. I don't mind it, but I've got to be in the mood. Yeah, I can eat them on pizza. I can eat them pasted and yeah, it's sauce, ketchup, and, and everything. Like I know, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, soup. I, I love tomato soup. Oh, I don't, tomato soup. Oh. I don't eat it often enough, to be fair. Um, but yeah. Tomato soup with some buttered buttered bomb cakes. Ooh. Oh, crusty rolls and tomato soup. Oh no, see, I like I like softer bombs with mine. I'm not a, not a big crusty roll fan. I've got to be. Honest. <laughs> we can't get enough subject. Here, <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's you know. let's pull it back before we before, <laughs> before we divulge into the world of food because yeah. we're both foodies. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. Okay. So, little quick little bit of housekeeping. We're. A, Recording this in a different place than where we normally record, and we are not too far from a railway line. So if you do hear strange noises, it's the trains. So it's a, if you do hear like a, a slight whooshing noise in the background, it's probably either the Hunts Cross to Southport train or the Southport to Hunts Cross train. Yeah. So either way, either way, there's nothing we can do about it. I'm sorry. Um, right. So should we get into a little bit of history of the tomato? The humble tomato. The humble tomato. Um, I'm going to say one of my favourite words now. I'm going to get to say, I don't get to say this word often enough. Go on. Okay. It's believed that the tomato was introduced to Europe by Spanish, this is the word, conquistadors. I love saying that (laughs) word. Ridiculous, I know, but I I, I never get to say it. So I'm going to say it again. Conquistadors. Wow. Is that the actual pronunciation? I think so. Okay. W- would you disagree? Do you know a, a different I, way to? I, honestly, I don't know a different way to say conquistadors. No. So maybe 
maybe somebody else does. Maybe. Maybe, maybe we're saying it right, or maybe we're just butch- butchering it. We don't know. Fair enough, but I'm I'm going to stick with conquistadors. Okay. Um, it was introduced from Mexico and sort of Mesoamerica. Um, okay, did you want to have a go at that Aztec name there? Uh, I do apologise, but the Aztec name for tomato is Tomatel, I think. That's or Tomatel. Uh, maybe. That's as close as I think I'm going to get as well. Yeah. Um, tomato. And it means swelling fruit, and it's believed to have originated in and around Peru, Chile, and Ecuador. So, yeah, that kind of South American northern bit, you know? Well, yeah, it's... Yeah, it is actually. You're yeah. quite right on, on, on the map. On the map. On See, the map. I, I, I wanted to do geography in school, and there wasn't enough people to run it, so they, they stopped it fuming. <laughs> <laughs> Raging. <laughs> can't, um, can't do geography in school because there's not enough people to run it. Yeah. God. There just wasn't enough interest. And I, I like geography. I, I like now, it. to be fair, I do like geography myself. Um, I like messing around with rocks. <laughs> Let's leave that one there, shall we? <laughs> um, I'm, I'm just going to say it now, Dave. Filth. Utter, <laughs> I, utter filth. I wasn't even going down that route. That's, <laughs> really? that, that's your mind. That's nothing to do with me. Utter filth. Uh, some credit the Spanish explorer or how, whichever way you look at it, explorer or genocidal maniac Cortez. Ooh, with yeah, I'm, ooh, I, I I went there. Ooh, oh, you I went there. I did it. I oh, I went there. Oh, that's gonna tread on some toes. Ah, uh, that might trigger some people, but I went there. Oh, Explo- well, explorer or genocidal maniac, depending on your view. Well, to be fair, he was an explorer, but he also was a genocidal maniac. So there you so go. There you go. There you go. I'm just covering all the bases, as we say. History laid bare. There you go. Um, he's he's some credit him with. Uh, bringing it back to Europe, or the seeds back to Europe in 1519-ish. Um, it's not widely accepted, but it's accepted by some. Um, we're not saying he did or he didn't, we're just saying. Well, if he did, he did. If he didn't, he didn't. <clears throat> but Fair enough. What I can't believe is... Oh, train. <laughs> that strange, <coughs> strange noise there, that is the train. That might happen a couple of times. Right. What I can't believe is what they were originally grown for when they were brought back to Europe. Because I've got to admit, when I read this bit in the notes that you sent me <clears throat> from uh, the website that you found it on, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. The, the, it's, it's like the whole pineapple situation. What's the pineapple situation? It, because it was such an exotic thing and only high class people could buy it at that time when it was brought into England. Oh, fair enough. Oh, that and makes it sense. Was, it was used the same way that Europeans used tomatoes. It was used as decoration. It was, yeah. They didn't eat them. They no, just. They, they didn't know. They, they didn't know they were edible. <clears throat> they just hung them up. Yeah. Around the houses and around the gardens, and it's like, oh, look, look at my pretty red thing hanging up. What is it? I don't know. Yeah, it could be. Um, a tomato. A tomato. Um, they weren't, they didn't exactly have a great reputation, but hang on, before we go, I've got to ask you this. Do you know the difference between knowledge and wisdom? Probably the look on my face says it all. (laughs) The look on his face says no. (laughs) Yeah, okay. Okay. I'll I'll agree there, the look on my face does say no, so hit me Dave, what's the difference between wisdom and knowledge? Okay, the difference between knowledge and wisdom fellow co-host and dear listeners is knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit which it is and uh, yeah there it goes yeah, yeah and, and wisdom is knowing, knowing it doesn't go in, in a, fruit a fruit salad there yeah. you go yeah so uh, if you're listening uh, you can either regale or annoy your colleagues with that <laughs> one tomorrow whichever whichever <laughs> go for it <laughs> they'll probably look at you and go like well yeah we already know that it's right. You Alter- don't have a tomato in a fruit salad. Or alternatively, they look at you like you've completely just lost the plot. Uh, anyone listening, just go in tomorrow and say that to your boss. I dare you. <laughs> Get back to us some. Uh, Let us know if you got fired or not. <laughs> well, well, oh wow, Dave! 
not fired, <laughs> but let us if you do say it to someone, leave us a comment and say or tell us what actually got said or what was the look up on the face. Yeah. Because I I really, really, really want to hear about this. Yeah, I'd be curious. And obviously we don't want anybody getting fired. So if your boss is a bit of a grouch, don't. Yeah. Le- leave it. Um, <laughs> we don't want to be held <clears throat> responsible. <laughs> no, absolutely not. So from pretty much the time it landed back in Europe. <coughs> um, Sorry about that. That's all right. Uh, the tomato was, it was bashed. Um, there was a 14th century, whoops. There was a 14th century doctor and naturalist. Um, now I've been practicing this name and I still can't get it right. Pietro Andrea Mattioli. Sounds right to me. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll go with that. Pietro Andrea Mattioli. Um, he believed that tomatoes were a member of the nightshade family of plants, uh, which are poisonous, as well as being sinful. Now, this one, <laughs> this surprised me because sinful? Maybe it's because of the colour. Yeah. That could indicate sin. Poss- yeah, possibly. Possibly. But... As well as that, I mean, they were believed to be a, <clears throat> they were believed to be a mandry. Yeah. Which yeah. which were, I'm, uh, I'm not up on my Bible studies, I have to be honest. But it they were referred to in the Old Testament as a a, a dudaim. I'm re I deeply apologise if I've got that wrong. Du D U D A I M Dudaim. Which is Hebrew for love apple. So we do apologize if we do have any Hebrew speaking listeners. Um we're we're not that well versed in the language. So No, we're so not. We are very sorry. Apologies if, if we did ruin the pronunciation there. So, However, um It was then known as a aphrodisiac. An aphrodisiac. So, so even more sinful. So <laughs> extremely not, sinful. Not only is it red. But now it's, it, and after it's, yeah. it's getting people going, which is oh. not, you know, it's it's starting people's motors running, which is not. It's getting, it, to, to excuse the really, really bad pun that I'm going to come out with, it's getting a little bit saucy with the tomato. Now then, <laughs> now then, here we go. Um, it, it wouldn't do anything for me seeing someone eating a tomato, but, you know, well, different time. Different, different time, you know. Different strokes for different folks. That's the one. That's the one. Um, then, in 1597, uh, a barber surgeon named John Gerard, he further bashed the tomatoes' reputation in, a, in his book, Herbal, where he claimed the tomatoes claimed it contained a uh, tomatine, which they do, but it's not enough. It's not in a harmful, uh, it's harmful not en- amount. It's not enough to be harmful. Um, it was later found that his research was rushed. It was shoddy. He just didn't do. Yeah, he, he plagiarized a, a lot of inv- of his information from other sources and yeah. didn't do enough. He didn't, <clears throat> you know, it wasn't enough research. So you know, that's why we have peer review now. Yeah, but it's 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 not like of of course not like this particular podcast where we go in depth in our research. Mm. 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 Well, to be fair, there is a there is a few things that we have looked into recently, and a few that I've mentioned today, which we're going to be looking possibly looking into. Oh, we've got stuff coming, oh, exciting yeah. stuff coming down the pipe. Well, um, which it will take a lot of research to do that. It will. It will. Um, um, right. This this is. Hmm, see, this is this is now where the story takes a bit of a turn. Yeah, because. In the late 1700s, by this point, tomatoes had been considered poisonous. But it was due to the tableware that people were using. Mm. And the tableware in question was pewter plates used by more wealthy Europeans. You know, you got a little bit of money and you're not going to be using turned wood for your bowls and your plates and stuff like that. You're going to be, oh, look at me, I, I, I can afford pewter. Now, as most people would know, pewter has a high lead content and it reacts to the chemicals in the tomatoes and it causes reactions that made people ill. So this is why the tomato at this period of time was considered poisonous. It was. It was. And it stayed that way 
until um, <clears throat> eighteen twenty. So one hundred and twenty years. Um, is that right? N- no, I think because it, it says late, it was late seventeen hundreds, wasn't it? So. Oh yeah, so late seventeen hundreds. So maybe what well, you could say seventeen fifty, seventeen sixty, maybe. <clears throat> Well, any time after that, I suppose. So at least 60, 70 years, possibly. Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> but that was until uh, uh, Colonel John... No, not, not John at all. <clears throat> Excuse me. In 1820, in steps our hero, Colonel Robert Gibbon Johnson. Now, Gibbon Johnson was a gentleman farmer, a historian, soldier, horticulturalist, and statesman. He was also quite a big tomato fan. He loved the tomato. He really did. Uh, so much so that when he brought it back from his travels abroad, he ran competitions every year to try and grow the biggest tomato, and he offered a money prize. But the people living around him thought he was he was nuts. They thought he was mad. Yeah, the, no, like at this point in time, the tomato is still very, <clears throat> very mistrusted. Very misunderstood, I'd say as well. It's it's sinful. It's, it's sinful. It, it's it's poisonous. It's it, poison. It, it, we don't like it. We don't want it. Yeah, you're just like no, we're not we're not having that. But <sighs> one morning in 1820, as the legend goes, Colonel Johnson did something pretty drastic. He did. Now we've got an ep- excerpt from a history text here. This is from the story of Robert Gibbon Johnson and the tomato from Sale train again from the Salem County Historical Society now we're both going to take turns in reading this shall I start? Fire away <clears throat> okay Colonel Johnson announced that he would eat a tomato also called the wolf peach Jerusalem apple or love apple on the steps of the county courthouse at noon that morning in 1820 about 2,000 people were jammed into the town square the spectators began to hoot and jeer. Then 15 minutes later, Colonel Johnson emerged from his mansion and headed up Market Street towards the courthouse. The crowd cheered. The fireman's band struck up a lively tune. He was a very impressive looking man as he walked along the street. He was dressed in his usual black suit with white ruffles, black shoes and gloves, tricone hat and cane. At the courthouse steps, he spoke to the crowd about the history of the tomato. He picked a choice one from the basket on the steps and held it up so that it glistened in the sun. To help dispel the tall tales, the fantastic fables that you have been hearing, and to prove that there is no excuse me, and to prove to you that it is not poisonous, I am going to eat one right now. There was not a sound as the colonel dramatically brought the tomato to his lips and took a bite. A woman in the crowd screamed and fainted, but no one paid her any attention. They were all watching Colonel Johnson as he took one bite after another. He raised both his arms and again bit into one and then the other. The crowd cheered and the fireman's band blared a song. He's done it, they shouted. He's still alive. Now that, as we said, is the story of Robert Gibbon johnson and the tomato from the salem county historical society i mean he must have known the most he must have he must have had an inkling you know and i'd have quite liked to have been there actually when i first come across this story i thought you know what i'd have loved to have been in that crowd just this guy standing on the steps of the just chewing away on tomatoes (laughs) (laughs) it's just you just stood there like uh, what now? But, what is this? But everyone who was stood there was expecting him to have a horrible, violent, nasty death. Yeah, yeah, they because were. Con- they, they were still considered poisonous. They were mm-hmm. still considered sinful and horrible. Mm-hmm. And he just kept eating them. Apparently, mm-hmm. he went through the whole basket, according to what I've read. So he literally went through a basket, a whole basket of what was considered poisonous, sinful, also an aphrodisiac. Yeah. Well... If it was considered an aphrodisiac, I'm going to say whoever was he was married to probably had a very lively night. But, you know. Steady now. Easy. Easy. Saucy with the tomato. Uh, it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> you can't use it twice. Come on. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, fair enough. I'll give it to you. Fine. Um, 
But yeah, that's that's how the legend goes anyway. Um, I just thought it was a brilliant story. I just yeah. thought it was fantastic. Yeah. Um, the poor tomato. What a... What a... What a history. You wouldn't think, would you? Just No. You no, know. you wouldn't. If, you, if, you, if you're in, in the... If you're listening to this anywhere where you can just for a minute just picture a tomato okay mm. the storied history that that thing's had <laughs> come on the storied history of the humble tomato it's it, and now it's a staple on everyone's plate it, you can't have a salad without tomato you no you can't you know no, you, you got many different varieties of tomatoes absolutely you know, and you, you, you cherry tomatoes plum tomatoes sun dried tomatoes whoever eats them Beef, uh, beef, beef tomatoes. There's, there, there's all kinds, and I'll be honest with you. I actually thought That's just reminded me of Brian Blessed. Okay, um, <laughs> I'll be honest. I did think tomatoes originated in Italy. I was surprised to learn that they are from South America. I was surprised. Why are you looking at me like that? <sighs> <laughs> I didn't know. I'm not a food historian, am I? Come on. Oh my. Right. Okay. Well, this, is anyway. o- this is obviously knowledge I should have had, but didn't. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, moving on. Moving on quickly. Right, um, to, to <clears throat> close this off, um, we've got a few more things to say about about Robert Gibson, Gibbons, sorry, Gibson, Gibbons, Johnson. In the 1980s, uh, Salem, New Jersey celebrated Robert Gibbons Johnson Day, complete with dramatic reenactments of the event with actors in period costume. Apparently so, yeah, did. I've I've not seen it, but that tells you all you need to know. There's, oh, yeah. there's someone stood there in a black suit, white ruffles, tricone hat. Black shoes. Black and shoes cane. and a cane. Eating a basket of tomatoes and... The, the... People are just stood there watching them. My question is... <clears throat> Is there a lady in the crowd that faints and no one takes any notice? Maybe. Oh, yeah. that Possibly. Possibly. An actress in the crowd that does that? That'd be good. And everyone just ignores her as she's <laughs> on the floor. Say, like, she's just like, <laughs> oh, my. Oh. <laughs> I just picture people just glancing and going, oh, yeah, I'm back to it. Uh, <laughs> she must have had a tomato for the breakfast. Hey. <laughs> and then in 1988, just to round this out now, um, Good Morning America which is obviously the morning show in the United States, claim that uh, Johnson was the first person in America to eat a tomato. That's a bold claim. It is a bold claim because we we were actually discussing this before, before we we started doing the uh, this this podcast, this episode. Um, we were discussing this earlier on, and even I turned around to you and said, that's, that's a very hard thing to prove unless there's an actual historical account of him being the first person in Northern America. North America. That was a, yes, I'd say that, that was a good eat, point. Eat a tomato. Because as, because you, as you rightly pointed out, they've probably been eating them in South America. For hundreds, if not thousands of years. There you go. Oh, oh my. <clears throat> oh my. <laughs> so, there you go. So that That's a bold statement to make, uh, Good Morning America. I think maybe... You know, yeah, you I might think, struggle to prove that one. You might struggle to prove that one a little bit. So yeah, maybe maybe wind it in a little bit. Yep, yeah, fair enough. Okay, Martin's just declared war on the United States. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not saying what I'm thinking. No, there. absolutely I'm really not. No, absolutely not. Um, so there you go. That was Especially the history. Especially the accent that I was going to do. No, leave it oh. now. Leave it now. <laughs> um, that was the history of the humble tomato and the story of Robert Gibbon Johnson. That was and a rather interesting. One, that was a good fair. one. It was I, a, it, it made me smi- it made me smile and it gave me a good giggle when I was in work when you sent when you sent me the uh, as I said you sent me the notes over for it. I I honestly did not know anything at all about this. And when you said Salem, I literally thought it was Salem, Massachusetts. Yeah, I was surprised when, to find out. Well, when I started reading it, the information started gathering the notes. Mm. It wasn't till a, a good 10, 15 minutes in that I, I learned it wasn't in Salem, Massachusetts. And it was just like, well, 
I, I actually thought that was the only sale I'm in America, same. to be honest. Same. Absolutely same. But there you go. Uh, an interesting little one. Actually, I thought it was good. And it's just... Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, I did this one. I'll be honest. I did this one for me because I wanted to do it. So, you yeah. Know. You know, we, we've, we've had other episodes where we've discussed you know, certain things, which everybody will be able to listen to. You know, episode one, episode two. You know, we're on episode three now, so we're pushing the boat out a little bit here. We're getting there. <laughs> we're, but it's growing. It's slowly but surely. <clears throat> and if you haven't listened to episode one or episode two, Go back and give them a listen. Um, in episode one, we talked about Tommy Fitz. That we did. And in a episode... Very, a very, very cheeky chappy. Stole a plane, <laughs> landed it in New York. Go and have a listen. In episode two, we discussed the absolute heroic events surrounding HMS Glowworm. And it's... David versus Goliath fight against the Admiral Von Hipper. Absolutely. So definitely, definitely go back and check those out. And if you're still here, thank you very much. I've been Dave C. Bannerman. And I've been Martin Ian Almond. This has been History Laid Bear. We'll see you next time. See you soon.